I'm Daryl Bach, Executive Director for the Hendricks Center at Dallas Theological Seminary, as well as Senior Research Professor of New Testament Studies there. I'm also a past president of the Evangelical Theological Society. And I'm going to cover two things. I'm going to talk about the results related to millennials, and I'm going to talk about kind of what the alliance is, is about. Um, and um, both points I'll make very, very briefly because we want to get to your questions. Um, but I think there are two basic reasons why millennials are uncertain or more uncertain about Israel than those who have preceded them. Uh, I think, first of all, it's important to remember that most of the events in the Middle East since 9-11 have not involved Israel so much as other parts of the region. And so if you think about how uh, millennials are, uh, what they've heard and what they've experienced in their life, uh, they have experienced a Middle East where the story has been largely elsewhere. And I think that's an important factor in, in what we are seeing. I think the other element with regard to millennials is, is that they are, um, I, I'm not sure whether they're disengaged or overwhelmed uh, in terms of what they are exposed to. One of the things that's happened in our world in the last 25 years, within my lifetime, is the world has gotten both bigger and smaller at the same time. What I mean by that is, is that, is that although our population has exploded, we're much bigger, there are many more people here, we're also at the same time much more tightly connected to one another by what it is that we see and are exposed to. And so that combination produces a lot of voices that are going around that millennials end up having uh, to process. And they have grown up in a world in which they have heard that every angle of the story counts to one degree or another, which causes, them, which causes people, all people to do one of two things. They either line up with what they're oriented towards and say, I'm only going to listen to that voice, or they end up hearing so many voices it's hard to know exactly where to land. And so I think those are the factors that we are dealing with as we think about uh, the millennial part of this equation in particular. And I also think we're seeing a little of that seeping over into some of the other age groups as well. So that leads to the question, uh, why, why the alliance? And I think the survey gives a rationale for forming this group and speaks to the need for careful and fulsome discussion about the region with its many conflicting interests. Our, the Alliance has a goal of being uh, informative about the region and discussing the biblical and historical roots that have impacted the region in many cases, not just for centuries, but for millennia. And the discussions about it uh, revolve around three of our major world religions. Uh, so that's important. And there's a tendency in our secularized society to try and underplay the role of religion, which is absolutely impossible to do in the Middle East. You cannot discuss the Middle East without being aware of what's going on religiously in the region. And so a theological reading of what's going on and an awareness of what's going on between the various faiths represented in the region is very important. Add to that what we've already mentioned with regard to supersessionism, a particular conversation happening within the Christian community about whether or not the church has replaced Israel in God's program, and you've got a need for discussion at a theological and at a biblical roots level. The second factor that I think is important here and why the alliance exists is because recent history gives us important context and they feed into the current situation. And by recent history, I mean everything from the late 19th century on. The, the, all these elements play into how Israel was formed and how she is seen on the international stage. So that means the impact of Jews moving into the region before World War I, the impact of World War I, the Balfour Declaration, the reality of what the Holocaust did to views about Jews around the world, 1948, 1967, the hostility of many of the surrounding nations and other groups that, that live in proximity to Israel, along with some important emerging exceptions of people working hard to try and get along with Israel, but a situation in that sphere that is very much in flux. All of that feeds into where Israel is today, and most of that is, are, are stories of history that millennials in particular aren't necessarily particularly aware of. If you add into this the infatatas, the random missile and suicide attacks that happen in the nation, one can understand why security and walls are also a part of the story, 
as well as the degree of retaliation those actions sometimes produce. So when you put all those elements together with the earlier ones, and all, many of these things are distant for millennials, not to mention some of the rest of us, we hope to help people appreciate the dynamics of what's going on in the region, facilitate meaningful discussion and reflection, why there should be an appreciation for Israel in the region, her importance for the Middle East, as well as her right to be there. We wish to do it while recognizing the complexity of the pursuit of peace and justice with an awareness of the concerns of those who are not allied to Israel. Such a group is needed because of the long history of conflict in the region, a conflict that extends back thousands of years, as I've already noted, and easily erupts now and again in part because of this history and because of the claims of non-legitimacy. The Alliance is an attempt to discuss the divinely given role for Israel on the one hand and the responsibility for the work of genuine peace in the region on the other. And our hope is, is that by facilitating that discussion and by producing materials that get us to reflect on the dimensions and layers that are involved in the Middle East, that we will uh, help people to reflect on the important role of Israel both biblically, historically, and socially in our current world, and that the result will be a better conversation about what's going on in the Middle East.